Thank you for staying with us. You're still watching The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. It's time to take global stories making headlines in our national dailies this morning. And joining us to review the papers is Dr. Martin Mullen, as a public affairs analyst. Good morning, sir. Thank you for joining the program. Yeah, good morning, everybody. It's nice to be with you guys again. Welcome. Same. Welcome. Welcome. All right, so let's start with the Daily Trust this morning. And the Daily Trust leads with PDP governors worry over hardship, mismanagement of economy. The writers here says, frown at government's inability to resolve wage crisis, local government autonomy assured under us, and finally, will respond appropriately, that is being said by the APC. So what's your comment on this? Well, we know what the, what the economy is saying. It's not the very best at the moment. And then there is uh, mismanagement of some funds, which were not even, we don't understand. But with all of this, they've said, you know, the local government autonomy is assured under them. In fact, someone else has come out to say this is only going to show um, the governor's incompetence um, if, you know, if the local government autonomy, the financial autonomy now has been given to all of the local government chairmen, they can develop their, their, their constituencies better. But so let's look at the fact that the PDP governors are saying they don't understand the inability to resolve the wage cr um, crisis at the moment, especially knowing that there's been a back and forth with the wage award. And finally, APC is saying so much. They are on the other side of the divide saying they will respond appropriately. I would like to get your comment on all of this. Yeah, once again, I think... Uh... We are in a situation whereby the opposition, which is the major opposition, which is the PDP, yeah. and the rest are really telling us that this is what we are, we are seeing. You and I knew that even prior to the current political party coming to power, APC had that type of system of uh, opposition yeah. led by their spokesperson, which I don't want to mention, is the all of us know him. <laughs> so I, I feel that at this point in time, what uh, it turned on the PDP to do that, but the PDP, before they can do that, they need to put their house in order so that they can have credibility in whatever they are saying. Talking about the hardship, the hardship is a macro situation whereby everybody in Nigeria is not insulated. And uh, my interest is in mismanagement. That was the same uh, accusation we had when PDP was in power and APC was uh, at the other side. And even if you remember Nigeria's story from 1966 up to date, it's always the issue of mismanagement and corruption. Mm -hmm. So for them to apply some of these things, and uh, I feel they are trying to position us and let us understand, because whatever they are saying here is not new. What they should provide is a solution. What are the solutions to the mismanagement? Because they have been there for some years. And uh, they, they, they super mismanage too. So if this time, uh, uh, this uh, other party are coming and they're becoming a supersonic in mismanagement, then that tells you that uh, there's something to do about the quality. Then uh, for me, for the local government, honestly, I think that is the best, one of the best decisions that have come up because the grassroots, that is where the democracy, that is where the governance is. The grassroots, this is where people need to feel it. But if at all, a situation whereby the finances, which used to be where some of the state governors are looking at, even as at uh, recently, one of the state governors uh, for the uh, PDP, is it or your state, was saying that the central can, uh, the, uh, the Supreme Court cannot decide for them to do. He has even set up a committee to understand, which for me is a, a lot of, a, 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 we are looking at it as a circle. Because uh, the, the, the Supreme Court is, is, is the highest uh, uh, level of uh, arbitration in this country. So if they have put on a decision, and uh, which I know that every person should abide, so a state government should not just come and say, no, this is what I don't want. Then at the same time, you're talking about yeah, the incompetence of some of the governors. It's true. For me, I believe so, because uh, they are just sitting down there in their state capital. They don't even know what happened at the grassroots. So it is not left for the chairman, if they have that facility, they may not go cap in hand. I, I remember in one of the states, which is where I come from, in fact, the, the former governor has to open a particular account for all the local government chairmen. I happen that one of my cousins used to be local government chairman. And they were just that they could not do anything. Rather, it is whatever comes to them from, the, from Calabar, that is where they can operate. Even when they're operating, most of them were no longer living in the local government. They were all living in the state capital. So for me, this is going to bring a lot of reforms 
in the local government administration because this is where the governance is. This is where the people are. So now the chairman elected will be able to work. But my concern still have to do with the state electoral commission, which are being controlled by some of the state governors. Like uh, well, I use Cross River for instance, the chairman of the state electoral commission, <laughs> Dr. Uche just resigned, said that his time cannot move on. But for me, what is it that if the election in that local government, the various local government, will be conducted by the central INEC, we will now have a lot of other people from other political party opposition running their council, which is like their own as a local government assembly, effectively, and they will be getting closer to the people. I'm telling you, if you go to some local government council, even in the north, you see that nobody goes to work. They only come there when it is time to collect salary from uh, their major head office. Uh, so this is what is happening. For me, it is going to be an issue of uh, transparency and uh, improved governance, and the people will have the impact of what is uh, done. And that has to do also, we need to also review the Nigerian constitution of 1979 and understand it really. How is that autonomy going to work? This is what we have to understand. If you want the autonomy to work, let there be an independent electoral body to select the representatives of this local government and not the one conducted by the state. And this is the only way we can go about that. So if you are also talking about uh, hardship, like I mentioned already, there's hardship all over the land. We know about that because of price, the cost of food item. Every person is hungry, except those who are the in Abuja, that, that are not hungry because they have other largesse around them. But majority of people are hungry and it's affecting us. This is my own take about this type of review. So PDP, they are trying to be on opposition, but they need, they need to learn the art of that opposition because their house is not in order. This is where we, they, they will have problems because we have, they, they have the so-called G5 governors, then how are they working? So this is what we have to understand. They should have to put their hearts in order before they can say anything because they're only trying to just say so that people will hear them. That is my view, strictly my view. Yeah. As related well, to that situation. But Dr. Morgan, doesn't it worry you that um, when these people, the APC, were in the opposition and they were very vocal about the things uh, that they felt were wrong, they are now in power and they are doing worse. But that's not what is even worrying a lot of Nigerians. The, the problem of Nigerians right now is that when you want to say the truth, they shut you down. The first thing they say is that you want to topple the governor of, uh, you want to disrupt the, the, the government of Tinubu. That's what they say. You are just against Tinubu. It's not as if these things are not happening. You're part of the opposition. opposition. It's very worrisome. Ningi, Senator Ningi, raised his voice and said that he didn't understand how additional money was put into the budget, that there was, there was a padding that he didn't understand. Instead of explaining to him and explaining to Nigerians, he was, he was suspended yeah. for many months. So his people were not represented because he Six made months. an observation. Right now, still on that, uh, and in every newspaper anyway, but still on Daily Trust, we have this story, Senate Saxon Dume as chief whip expert decry attack on free speech. Other newspapers are carrying that because he granted an interview to one of the um, TV stations and said that there's hunger in the land and he's been telling the president and telling everybody and they're they are shutting him down. Immediately after that interview, he was removed from his position as the, the, the chief whip, I think, of yeah. the Senate. Chief whip. So, so, Everybody is being, is being shot down if you try to say the truth. Because this is an APC member also say, trying to say the truth, that there's hunger in the land. That You don't need a prophet to tell you that. But the accusation was that he was anti tinubu Doesn't that give you sleepless nights? Well, uh, yeah, it can give us sleepless nights because... Uh... Uh, the followership, well, when I mean the followership, we have, been able, we have not been able to differentiate between the personality from the institutions we are. We are. This is a government run by political parties, it's not an individual thing. If your member tells you, it's an autocritic, he says if your member tells you that, look, this is what is happening to us. I think the best thing, instead of shutting him down, it's good for you to now review and listen to him. I, I listened to that into one of those uh, pop, uh, Nigerian uh, TV channels, which when he said that when the government is being controlled uh, 
by some people who are shielding them or shielding him from getting access to the presidency. And at this point in time, he used some words, cryptocracy and, uh, and all that thing, in the form of governments, which they are not very, they didn't all go to the sensibilities or the power to be. And he was removed immediately, like Ningi. But oh, for, for him, do me, they removed him from the chief whip and they made him chairman on tourism. The, the tourism committee, so that you start make going up, up, and then you start thinking about what is happening internally. So for me, what I think in that situation is that it's not the best. The more crazy is that you listen to me. There is, there should be that total uh, separation of power. They should be able to listen to the people because he's representing a group of people. He's a honor, a distinguished senator. So if you have made some of this statement and he's a member of the, the, the in, inner house, the caucus. I remember that even prior to the election in National Assembly, he played a very vital role in the nomination of the Senate president and other people around. So I feel they should listen to him and see fine when we were in the opposition, we were seeing what was going wrong. Now that we are in power, let us see if you can correct the situation. I think that would have been the best way. Now, if it's been shot that, <laughs> like you say, sleepless night. In fact, you all of us who have insomnia because we are now worried that, yes, what are you coming to resolve? It's not the issue of attacking personality. No, it's the institution and the group telling that, yes, this is what is happening. He did not say he's personally attacking the president. No, he didn't say, but what he said that is what the feedback he got from the constituency, which will also relatively be with other constituents that we have in this country. So I, I will not be comfortable shutting down some of this positive voices that have to enumerate the feelings. It is now left for them to take it as a feedback, readdress the issue. What does it mean? Let us understand. But when you have some group of people who have so much use this word like cage, and the, the, our president does not see what is beyond the other side, he will not be able to understand. So I follow that interview, and objectively, we should have an open mind. We should stop personalizing institutions. We should stop putting ethnic colorations into it. We should stop politicizing certain decisions or certain acts that affect everybody. So that is what I do. So uh, APC should be able to readdress the issue, use their caucus, address and listen. Actually, what he said is not from the moon. It's the reality of the situations. Mm. All right, so um, still on Daily Trust, it says IOC is selling crude at $4 per barrel above market price. And that's been said by Dangote. But if you move over to the punch, that's what it leads with. It says IOC is still causing crude supply crisis. Dangote refinery cries out. The riders here says IOC is referring us to international trading arms for crude purchase, says Dangote refinery. And firms still pushing for dollar payment, says Coran flays middlemen for hijacking supply. So now, Dangote has been saying this for a while, that, that you know, the IOCs, that's the um, international ones, or, you know, just uh, oil, uh, oil, oil, oil companies, companies yes. exactly, are just um, ensuring that he, he in, in fact, it was more like a sabotage. Um, and now we're still seeing that. Why are they selling over, you know, the market price? Because at the end of the day, Dangote is a local refinery here. Why are they still um, trying to sabotage Dangote refinery? It's, it's a good question, but I want to get your comments on this. For the fact that Dangote is still saying that um, they're referring them to international trading arms for crude purchases, and you know, they are even buying at a higher price. Well, uh, the issue of Dangote is that uh, the euphoria we had when that uh, a private initiative came out, had now a taste of ashes in the sense that if it's coming out from the investor, he's seeing that, yes, this is what I'm suffering. That means there's an element of that sabotage like the claim. Yeah. I don't see why we have, like, uh, I'll talk maybe like a layman on the street, say we have in, uh, an abundant crude oil in Nigeria. Why is it buying from IOC? Why must it pass through the IOC? Is it part of the neocolonialism? No, the question is not fair. So for Mr. Dangote to have raised that alarm, we need to listen to him. 
Because the whole idea of the Dangote refinery was to ensure that they will not complement our own local consumption and even help us in the export and give us revenue in other derivatives apart from the BMS and HU. There are other derivatives that are gotten from uh, the finding of crude. And uh, based on that, I think the IOC too, they are now trying to stiffen him to avoid that there's an element of that conspiracy theory that Mr. Dangut, Alaji Dangut, they have outlined. Because as an investor, when you, you saw that the climate was very clean and gay, and you go in and there is change of rules, the goalpost being changed, it affects you. It affects your projection, it affects all your plans. And then from all indications, the refinery had one of the uh, other state of the art technology art in terms of oil refinery in the world, and in terms of even the capacity that we are loaded. But if it is allowed to operate uh, seamlessly, I think we should be able to get back this time of this crisis. All the crises in Nigeria is surrounded with PMS because our lives surround with the PMS. Because whatever we are doing, the fertilizer, the woman, the tailor, the seamstress, every person, I mean, to move our goods, the logistic aspect of moving our goods, produce from the farm to one point to another, it runs around the diesel and the PMS, and this is not affecting on you know, the cost of production. For me, I uh, it down with the rising up from what he said. I think I would have asked that yes, the, 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 the government should have been able to look at it and say, no, this guy is here at home. We can use the word, what happened to our police or the local content? If he now has a refinery and we have a local content policy, why not just give him that leverage and let him operate? No, I agree, he's an investor. But that regulation, certain regulations will be applicable, but not in getting the first uh, source of raw matter, which is the crude oil that we have. Whereas we have been having a lot of people vandalizing and stealing the crude oil. Many a time hear news that the crude oil has been stolen. Mm -hmm. Then it's now getting very appalling that a large data would take you down to now buy the crude, the crude as a foreigner. I think there was a period even went to source for crude in the US, which is for me. It's like a, you don't understand. It's just like what JP class say, water everywhere, but none to drink. So it's giving us a lot of concern. For a large down, we need to be supported. But the refinery, I am telling you that investment, I'm not speaking for him. Four or five countries put in Africa yeah, will not be able to put that type of massive investment that this uh, man has. It can be a consortium. But the way we should do it, we should allow him to get our AGO, get our PMS. Then everything will now stabilize, it likely stabilize, and we start exporting the, the other derivatives, LPFO, paraffin. What are what, what are we doing with those other derivatives, bitumen that we derive them? What happened to them? So that will even boost our own economy and let us move better than what we have currently. It's so unfortunate. The, it's just unfortunate that uh, even right now the NNPC is still seeking loans to uh, to sell crude. Uh, in the future, they're talking about mm -hmm. thirty to forty thousand barrels um, of uh, barrels of oil a day uh, to be given to that people. So it's, it's, right. it's unfortunate it's, that we are not getting him. Can does, you hear me? Yes, we can. Can you hear me? Yes, yes, we, can. yes we can hear you. It's a terrible yeah, thing so, because we are selling our crude in, in the future. What gauging? So how are we? It's terrible. What are we talking about? The OPEC quota. What are we talking about? But he's, there's an element of local content. So how do we define our local content? Is our local content being a function of the OIT to decide on what and what to be? Dangote is a local company. For me, up standard. It's a local company. It can give you that status because it's here. And I don't think you should be having these challenges with the service. That is why I said the euphoria that greeted the establishment of that uh, refinery is getting up to a taste of ashes. Because of some element that uh, they use the carbide oil, I think the cartel or whatever they use, they, they call it. It's not helping us at that point. I think we need to support Mr. Dangote and get this thing, this product across. And you see that automatically the cost of doing business, the cost of living, the transportation and the rest, food stock will just automatically get down and we'll be able to export other derivatives. That is what I'm saying. And that will give us more money into the country then. Life. Will be a little bit better. Go back to when uh, life is good. 
It's uh, unfortunate because there are other investors that could have wanted to do something. And when you see the kind of sabotage that is going on, you'll be afraid of establishing a business in even your own country. But right now, uh, let me take another a story from the Nation newspaper. Tinubu kicks off payment of 32 billion naira to students as loans. And then uh, we hear that... Uh, uh, a lot of students, uh, the, the northerners are leading, especially the institutions in the north are leading in this application. 103,000 applicants successful, North institutions ahead. It's a new dawn, says NANS, National Association of Nigerian Students. The worrisome thing is what is really happening. We've heard that the, the southerners are, are very skeptical. Some of them are not trusting this process and all that. But we've seen Federal institutions, for instance, UNICAL in the state that you come from, as at last week or two weeks before now, uh, I heard that they have not even submitted the data that they are supposed to submit for their students to be able to apply for these loans. So what is going on? Well, I think, uh, like you rightly say, like you use a UNICAL, at times we shoot ourselves on the, on the foot thinking that we are doing something, somebody else. But the question you and I is that I know that this student loan issue has been on for some time and uh, they came up with criteria and the portals. Except you're going to tell me that the, uh, some of the universities in the South do not have their portal activated. That is, can be one of the reasons, one of the things. That's what I'm they saying, really because they have, not, they have not even yes. given the, the data open. and they have not yes. activated it. So why is it that, why is it that there is this uh, <laughs> almighty glitch again coming in? Is it from there? We need an explanation. The, the Southern University needs an explanation to tell us what is happening to their students. Now, we are now seeing that I am not a promoter of a division, but if you have more students coming from the North, what happened to their portal? Is they don't have a different passport from the ones we have in the South? Those are some of these technical questions. Or is it just a total lethargy from the administrators or the schools in the study, the registrar or the VC? These are the things we need to understand because every person was given in our time, the same time. Why is your own not working? What are the internal factors? What are the external factors? This is what we need to know. This is what we need to know. We need to understand how do those in the north do their own that they are working and now they are benefiting from that loan, which is not uh, a, a host or whatever, but it's a reality of the issues. It's not a facade, but then we should be able to understand. It's so sad. At times, we, we, we become uh, prisoners of our own level of mentality and conscience as uh, an enlightenment. It's also a fact that we are taking certain narratives that are not what we want to do. Like you use University of Calabar, for instance. What happened? What happened to the VC uh, and the, uh, the registrar? Why couldn't they help their students uh, uploaded in the portal? This is the question we keep on asking. Some of these factors, we keep on blaming government, but what have been our proactive measure taking? These are some of these things I feel that we should be able to understand. Is it a deliberate action? If it's a deliberate action, is it a composite act to really deprive a particular group of uh, people from the section of the country? These are all the questions. These are all the narratives we need to understand. Get feedback from the various institutions in the South. Why are you not there? Is it that there's no bridge, there's no route, or I was not listed, or I was just listed just for the facade? These are the questions. It's worrisome. There should be an equity in whatever we are doing. Yeah. That is your society. So the same question goes back to the administrators in the Southern University. They need to talk. They need to open up. Talking to a question does not make you a rebel. You are only trying to better the system and let it run smoothly. So that is what we are looking at. Exactly. All right, Dr. Martin, we want to say thank you for coming. This is where we have to wrap it up on this segment. Thank you so much. Great time, great time. Thank you very much. Any moment. Have yeah. a wonderful day, sir. All right. So we're speaking Bless with you. Dr. Martin Morgan. He's a public affairs analyst. And we'll just be taking global stories that made headlines for our national dailies this morning. We'll be going on a short break. When we return, we'll be looking at our first hot topic that talks about a dose stage. Please stay with us.